Welcome to another video by Ferros Technology. Today we're going to be talking about creating a menu or a main menu. We're going to show you two different ways. We can either use the switchboard that comes with Access or you can roll it yourself. Every large system that you build for your customers really needs some precise navigation to go to and from the various forms, reports, and tools that you need to provide to your customers. So the first thing you do is you plan your navigation design. This should include your layout that shows how the users are going to get through your modules, through your forms, and through your various reports. The design though needs to be as flexible as possible. Systems always change. They need updating. They, there's reports added. There's new forms added. There's a system is always going to be dynamic. And when it's not dynamic, it gets replaced by another system that will be more dynamic. If you want your applications to persist, you make them as flexible and easy to modify and update as possible. So let's look first at the switchboard manager. The switchboard manager is nowhere on your desktop when you first install it. You have to actually add it. And here's the way to get that added. You're going to start by clicking the down arrow on the quick access toolbar and going to more commands. Now, when you click down here, you're going to click all commands. Then you're going to scroll down because it's incredibly long, you're going to scroll down to where you see switchboard manager down in the S's. I'm going to add it and put it at the end of my list and click OK. Now I'm set up and actually ready to use the tool. Click on the button I just added to my quick access toolbar. When you do it for the first time, you'll get this error message. It says we haven't created one before. So yes, I do want it to be created. I have a main switchboard there and I'm going to click edit. I can edit the name. I can call it main menu. I can call it main form, whatever you want to call it. The first thing I'm going to do is add a couple forms, not in edit mode. I realize that error and click on add. It's really flexible, really easy to change things. Now you'll notice I forgot to add the, the name of the item there. So I'm going to go ahead and call it open customers form. Now I'll click OK and I'll add the next form. I'll click New and change the name up front, Open. And I can't quite remember the name, so I'll go down here and click Form and Add Mode. Ah, it's the Products form. So notice I can go back and forth between these, editing and, and changing, updating as I need to. So now I have my main switchboard, but now I need another switchboard because I don't want to put all of my reports mixed in with my forms. So I'll go ahead and create a new switchboard page and I'll name that uh, Open Reports. And now I'll go ahead and add my reports to this switchboard. Now I can go down here to Open Report. I can click on the report thing. I've got two reports I want to do. I'm going to do an invoice one first. I'm going to add a new one here and um, open report, add the products report, and now I'll go ahead and give it a name here, open products report. And I'll click OK. Now I'll go back and change that uh, name of the first one where I open the invoice reports. OK. There we go. Now we have both of the items on our report menu. The last thing we need to add on every sub menu is to tell it to go back to the main switchboard or back to the previous menu that you wanted to go back to. Now here I want to go ahead and add a go to switchboard command that goes to that report menu. So now I will end up with a menu item on the main switchboard that goes to the report menu and I will be able to add an item to go to from the report menu back to the main switchboard. All right. Well, I think we're almost getting to the point of being able to test this. So let's go ahead and close it. 
Let's go down here under forms. You'll see a switchboard form now. I'll double click on that. And notice that when I float over the button next to it, I can then go to the customer's menu. Let's go to the products menu. Good, that one worked. Now I can open my report menu and notice it changed to the report menu. Now I can see my invoices. I can see my products. And now I can go back to the switchboard. Pretty quick and easy. It's well done in the respect that if I'm just opening forms and reports that are already built, I can quickly assemble them uh, into a switchboard menu. Now, when it gets a little bit more complex though is when you have some of the challenges. So here's a menu that I created for a customer once, and you'll notice that it has several different items on here. All these things are modules in my application. So each one of those buttons actually begins by opening up another whole database. So here I have this EOT core cleanup. The code for that resides under the button click. So the on click event property you see there for command 93, which is the name of that button. And when it executes and uh, it goes to a private subroutine that then opens up EOT core analysis.accdb on my hard drive. So there's the code, it runs the code and opens the data. Now, I could have done this in the switchboard. It wouldn't have been difficult, but it tends to be cumbersome when I've got a lot of them because I still have to write that code and I then have to place it in the switchboard and make a function out of everything. And I find it a bit more convenient when I've got a complex or a large set of items to put on my menu to go ahead and use the switchboard. So I'd prefer to go ahead and use the, um, use the tools that I have in a regular form to do that. And you'll see why here in a moment as I continue to go and show you the complexity that's in this menu. So when I open that EOT analysis, um, core analysis button, this is the menu that it opens. Now, this is a menu on top of the appli actual application that runs all of these analysis tools. And so uh, under one here, it opens a section on my hard drive. It's put under the on-click event procedure, just like I did before. And the code is really quite simple. Application follow hyperlink and it opens a folder. Now the application it's opening here is the Windows Explorer. Uh, or file explorer. Now it opens up that folder on it so I can see where it's going to place all of these other analyses that I'm dumping off to the hard drive as I execute each one. The next one is the loading of the data. Now in this case, I the example I'm going to use here actually runs a an embedded macro. Now embedded macros are pretty easy to create. I've already created all the queries that it's going to run and all the exports that's going to export it to the hard drive at the location that I just showed you in the previous button. The nice thing about this is if I were to put it in the switchboard menu, I, I would have to create the code to execute all of these queries and the imports and exports that I would use and in order to do that, I'd have to take the extra step of creating all these items, then writing the code, and then putting that code in a function, and then the function into the switchboard. I could just write the exports, I could write the imports, and I can run the, write the queries, and very quickly I can assemble those in a macro instead of having to wrap it around in a function. So this makes it a little quicker for what my purposes are. And I've got numerous examples of these kinds of choices that you have to make between the embedded switchboard tool versus rolling it yourself under buttons and laying it out in a menu type structure in a regular form. So I hope you've gotten something out of this video. Uh, it's a lot of information I threw to at you all at once. But if you get some good things out of it, you hit the like button, it'd really help the channel. And if you'd subscribe so that we can continue to grow, 
That would be appreciated also. Hope to see you again later. Thanks.